Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Detour Live. I'm joined as always by four-time national road champion Johnny Trevorrow, uh, special guest, the voice of cycling Phil Liggett and Olympic gold medalist Scotty McGorry. Fellas, it's been a big day for sport. We've just had the Melbourne Cup and if he, bloody Jerry Ryan's won it again. Yeah, well, his partner's in it. We just saw him on the news, and uh, he'll hate this, but because he loves the celebration, but he loved to keep it in control. But he was shaking the, the bottle in excitement. He had a little scalp from the bottle, and they caught him on Channel 7 News. But uh, Val was much more demure. She was having a little drink out of the cup. Phil, is the Melbourne Cup big over in the UK? No, we've never heard of it. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's, it's always been big because <clears throat> when I used to work on the – <clears throat> Excuse me. When he so was right, John does it all the time. Bank, uh, <laughs> on the Congo <laughs> Bank cycle Cassie, down the eastern seaboard. That was always running in October. And, of course, the hype was coming because Mo uh, November was on the way and so was the Melbourne Cup. And um, and so I did learn about the Melbourne Cup many years ago, but I never really got close to it, of course, until uh, our long history now with Jerry Ryan. And um, I think I'm not mistaken, John. I think that's probably the third time Jerry has now won the Melbourne Cup, which is fantastic. <clears throat> Yes, his first his first one was American, as you yeah. mentioned, and yeah. and that was uh, his first ever runner in a Melbourne Cup, and he won it. And I was lucky enough to be at that. How you uh, say that, John? You know, he came to the Tour de France that year, yeah. and he went off to the stables, and that's when he bought the American and took it back to Australia. During the no, 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 he was actually in America at the time. I'll tell you how it happened because I was driving along with Jerry and Johnny Rebo in the back and he get a, got a call from these, this agent and said, Jerry, I've got the horse for you. And it wasn't, you're right, it was a French horse, but it was actually in America at the time and it wasn't going, it didn't like the American gravel tracks. And he said, this horse is qualified for the cup. It's ridiculously good price, and it's capable of winning it. So Jerry bought it on the on the spot in the car uh, 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 during that Tour de France. No, I see, I learn something every day, John. <laughs> John, uh, two two things to fill in, John. John, what's a ridiculously good price? Do you know? Yeah, it was only a couple of hundred thousand. So that was, well, you know, for I a, remember that figure, two hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. So for, that, for for a horse of that uh, a stature, um, you know, if you had a if it had gone to America and not been going well, it wouldn't have been anything like that. But they just thought it was finished. But this guy knew. He just said, it doesn't suit the American gravel tracks. So uh, they got it out. And it was, yeah, it was brilliant, of course. And I was lucky enough to go to that cup and to the after party. So I was drinking for the cup like Val was tonight. So I had a great night, which was at one of Jerry's pubs. Their party here was at the Prince, uh, where I just saw them on. Uh, I didn't make the party this year, but... Uh, um, they were just on Channel 7 News. So, you know, Gadinsky and, and Lloyd Williams or other partners, they're all there partying, having a great time. Fabulous. So the, the, Aussie, the, Aussie, the Aussie battlers got one up. So Lloyd and, and Jerry. Yeah. Got one up, Aussie <laughs> um, to, to you, Phil, you, you, so yeah. you know of the Cup from because of your time spent in Australia. But Absolutely. Has, there been any, has there been any hype of it like now? Has it been on the news? Has there been a build-up for it in the UK? No, not at all. No, it's not been mentioned in fairness. But the year that uh, Jerry did win, I was in a coffee shop in my local village here, just five k away, having a cup of coffee, reading the Daily Mail newspaper on the sports section. I just read Australian entrepreneur Jerry Ryan won the Melbourne Cup and a cheque for $5 million yesterday. And I thought, what? I had no idea he was running in the Melbourne Cup. Or anything. And I sent him a little message and said, Jerry, I cannot believe you never told me he said, Phil, you missed out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was even running the horse in the Melbourne Cup at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Scotty, yeah. Yeah. Evidently, the, the, the Melbourne Cup is actually uh, is quite, is quite big in, in, in Britain now. In, oh, in the racing circles. Well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what, that's, what, uh, what's going on, John? We only talk um, about COVID here now. Not <laughs> that was Kay. That was Kay closing the doors. I was, we were making too much noise for her in watching television. I hope, had, I hope <laughs> a little, a little flutter on the winner today. Otherwise, I'll be very disappointed in Kay. Yeah. No, we, well, it's another. It's a bit of a. It's a bit of a Dan Jones story. You know, Dan who, who messes up the bit. I got a couple of uh, tips from uh, Jerry of his horses, and I misunderstood what he said. Oh, and no. I backed. I backed the, the one that didn't win, and I uh, missed out, and I backed the, the wrong horse. But anyway, that's another no, story. Ha hang it's on, you've got to you got to tell the truth. You've rung me to back it. I still haven't got the yeah, money well, yet. Okay. Now that it's lost, I reckon I've got Buckley's. Uh, it's a, it's a good place for a lawsuit there, I think, Dan. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought um, we've, still, we've still got plenty of winnings left over from the Tour de France, haven't we? No. Um, great divides. <laughs> Iffy in the doghouse. What's happened, John? You've been kicked out of the cabin. <laughs> well, I moved. Well, you complained about when I was in the little room and I couldn't come outside here when I had all the kids and grandkids here, but they've all nicked off today. So now it's just Casey and I. She's in there watching telly. And I've come out on the little patio area here uh, mm. at uh, at Nagambi, at the, oh, at the, the Nagambi Lakes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that, as you can see, one of the kayaks in the back there, I think I, I got my bike. I try to move my bike there, but I can't, you can't see it. But anyway. Um, I see I see breaking news today, Johnny, that the Nationals are going to go ahead 3rd to the 7th of February. Yes. Ooh. Yes, yep. uh, there's a bit, bit, bit we can talk about with that now. So um, uh, hopefully Phil's still coming out. We're, we're still, you know, hoping he will be out, out oh, here. No. For, uh, Nobody wants me. They can't. Oh, you never know. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, said, I just sent a, a message off to Stuart O'Grady to, to find out if you were still coming, Phil. Hopefully you are. Well, but, I said um, yesterday with commiserations to Stuart O'Grady and no reply yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're going to have a, 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 um, a whole festival of cycling in Adelaide. It won't be called the Tour de Under, but it's going to be it's like a substitute event. And I can tell you, all the people that I've spoken to in the last couple of days who were th who were going over the Tour de Under are still going because they're going for the party and the festival, and that's yeah. still going to be a case. It will be an NRS race, but at the top level, and they're hoping to have a national team with a couple of our big World Tour stars in the national team. So... Uh, that that is the plan and then um i'll come back from there it'll be the bay classic uh, just after that and then the nationals um uh, the, on the following wednesday and then the, the Mel melbourne to warnable uh, the weekend after that so there'll be a summer of cycling it just uh, it'll be a little bit different and as you know phil tool down under especially it's it's much more than just a bike race isn't it well, it's, it's very much is much more than that. It's a whole community getting together. Well, it's a whole state getting together as far as South Australia is concerned. And, and you know, you guys seem to be on top of this COVID business. You've shut yourself down. You've locked your island away. Your cases are just a, a joke to read. There's none of them to talk of. Um, but by keeping this, this sort of quarantine period for the whole of the continent, uh, you're going to survive it big time. Here, it's not the same at all. So I think, yes, I... I the, the only reason the Tour Down Under is cancelled is because they can't get the participants to come over. Uh, they're not allowed to come in. If, the, if they're all going to work together to bring them in and put them in a bubble, the riders didn't want to come because they've got to come back here to quarantine. They're going to have to quarantine there. And they all, all for eight days of racing in the middle and, the, and they're going to be out of action for five or six weeks or more. So they couldn't come. And that's the only reason. I mean, this race is... The, the crowd will come out and support the festival uh, for sure in Australia, and I'm delighted for that. But I don't see any guys, international. Um, guys, the, what's what's going to be interesting, right, is that because everybody's sort of gearing up towards 2021, so all the teams, you know, obviously, as, as you said, Phil, they don't want to come out to Australia because they may get caught out with too many times in quarantine and therefore miss their preparation or at least the races that start next season. However, with the way things look at the moment, Europe may not go back into racing for many months into 2021, and therefore, by the teams not coming to Australia, they actually forfeit the chance to do two World, World Tour races at the start of the season to at least have some World Tour points to start the year by doing TDU and also the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. So, and we won't know any of this until, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, obviously, as we go into 2021, we'll understand a bit more. But if that is the case and they don't actually get the European season up and going, those teams, therefore, in that case, should have come to Australia to get some racing under the belt, at least, and, and come yeah. to a safe country to get some training in as well. But they, they're also worried about getting into the start of the European season. They don't want to come out here, but it may actually backfire in the end. We'll just have to wait and see. It could well yeah, be. It could yeah. be well there. starting next year at the moment. Uh, the cases in Spain, the cases in France, the cases yeah. in, in, in Britain. Uh, are out of control. The government can't control it. The government have got no idea what to do. They're taking advice from scientists who know absolutely nothing. We've got big discussions on the radio this morning where a, a top scientist has called the scientists who are working with the government uh, just giving us completely untrue statistics and projections. So we're going into lockdown in 48 hours and the rumour's already starting that people aren't going to bother with the lockdown because they're just feeling that uh, 
this has got out of control and the government are not in a position to control it but who knows um, what yeah. would one of the big issues be if it does explode in Europe? I mean, the government in Australia, if we've got no cases, they won't want flights coming in because of obviously the potential of it spreading. Exactly. And that's what's already happening, Dan. The, there's a limitation on the number of people on flights. Therefore, it's costing you a lot of costing people who want to come uh, business class air fares because they're not bothering with the economy seats on the airplanes because they don't make any money on those. And they have to fly to at the moment. This is it might change in the next few days. Mm. They have to fly to a neutral state like Queensland, for example, and they have to quarantine at their own expense for two weeks before they leave that hotel. And by quarantine, they don't come out the front door of the hotel room. They don't even go to the lift. There's security on the floors to stop them doing that. So they are in a room for two weeks with the food delivered to the door. Now, there's nobody going to go through that for any reason other than a life and death situation. That's the yeah. so, You've done it. You've got the country safe. Uh, mm. There's no way we can do it. We just can't do it. Heck, that, we, get, Phil, we get about 400 on migrants a day coming across the channel in a boat, and we can't even stop them. So how are we going to control COVID? Mm. Mm. Phil, I'm not sure if you heard about the debacle that happened in Melbourne with quarantine, but what you just described is a very boring and mundane way to quarantine. But what mm. got us in a lot of trouble in Victoria was a much more exciting way of quarantining, which um, was quite <laughs> unfortunate with uh, some of the uh, security guards were getting up to no good with some of the, um, the wow. So we certainly not, we didn't condone that. Now, there, there, there's, we've got some racing coming up in Australia, Phil. There's going to be nine days of racing in northern New South Wales at the end of November, starting of December, as part of the National Road Series. But Victoria still has a, a hard border. So you unless you're an essential worker, you can't actually go into New South Wales. And there are several riders from several of the National Road Series teams that have flown to Sydney. I know there are three in particular from the Bridge Lane team that are in one hotel room in Sydney doing two weeks of quarantine on the home trainers every day doing multiple sessions. Um, when they've heard about these races coming up, then the team sent them up there and had to, they had to fly from Melbourne to Sydney. And they're doing this uh, two weeks of quarantine and training every day on, on Zwift and on the home trainer just to prepare for these next races that are coming up at the end of November. So desperate situation for anyone mm -hmm. in Victoria that wants to be a part of the National Road Series. In There hasn't been any races this year. This will be it. So uh, they're certainly mm -hmm. going to tough it out over the next couple of weeks in training. Uh, in, in I, I, I hear they've actually wasted their, their, their effort because uh, the, uh, the, the board is – the quarantine border is going to go come down in about ten days. Evidently, yeah. New South Wales and, uh, <laughs> and Victoria, so they will have done it for no, nothing. But anyway, at least they're, they're, they're well, keen. I'll give them that. Say that it's a bonding experience. Bonding experience. <laughs> <for boys. laughs> hey Phil, have you had a chance to look at the Vuelta much this Every year? Every day. Yeah. I, what um, do you, What do you think? I've got this new app, so I'm watching it on Spanish television. I've. Uh, I have a bit of a problem with the Spanish, but I can read the pictures, and I've seen a bit of the and, and again, it, it's absolutely incredible. Roglic, I, I just like this guy so much because he's a totally committed guy. He's a real strong team about him, but at the end of the day, he's left with usually two, and in the end, only one helper. That's Sepp Kuss, the American who I think could win on his own right these days now after his riding this year and last year. But um, when he finished at the top of the Langaroo, Boy, that guy was not in the same world as anybody else. He was blown away. And he, he's uh, he's come up positive again. We'll see what he does in the time trial now, uh, later today, my time. And um, and I hope he does really well. Because but the big surprise to me is Hugh Carty. This is a kid who, who used to ride alongside T in, uh, Gagan, T Tower Gagenhart, who, uh, who was, uh, just won the Giro d'Italia, on the Condor JLT Condor team. And now these two guys have gone their own ways through separate routes. And the, the, the poised, one's won the NAC Grand Tour Italy, and now and Hughes poised to possibly win the Vuelta Espana as well. And these kids were just club cyclists it, racing in Britain. Well, they're pros, but they're racing here in Britain. And, uh, and they've broken into the big time. And it's all gone under the, under the radar because of COVID. But we have actually witnessed three fantastic Grand Tours this year probably the most exciting in many, many years, all three of them. So we'll see if you can pull off the big one. He's looking set for a podium just now. 
I reckon he'll uh, jump up a place uh, tonight. I, I reckon he'll take uh, 30, 30, 40 seconds out of Carapaz. So uh, uh, it'll be interesting because he's quite a good time trialer as well. So it'll be good to watch. Yeah. Well, well, let's have a look at the profile for the time trial. Um, pretty flat. And then you've got oh. the big pimple at the end. Uh, who, 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 who's this going to suit, Ify? It, it, it's more than a pimple, mate. You, I was just reading about it. It's actually got uh, a section of the same, uh, even steeper than uh, Agnew. It's like 29%. The 300 oh. metres of this is 29%. Wow. It looks like those um <laughs> those jumps you used to make as a kid, you know, when you have your BMXs. Well, um, when you said, who does this suit? Dan, I said if you stack twenty, I was thinking to myself, stack twenty buses past that last ramp, and that's evil can evil written all over. <laughs> so, so what are you, you, you predicting? You, you've got you've got thirty kilometres that, that Rockleys is going to put a stack of time into them, um, and then suddenly you've got the last two k or one point eight k or whatever it is, uh, yeah. which just goes straight up, and then that brings all of the others into it. So I, I think uh, Hugh. Hugh Carthy, who handled the steepest hill they've had, he was the best. So that got his name written all over it. So I don't think he will beat uh, Roglic, but I reckon he'll run second to him. Yeah. Well, it's an elevation there in a, only a, in old money a mile of about uh, 300 metres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's from zero to the, to the top. Uh, that's quite a steep climb and you're doing it straight from the ground level to the top. <laughs> well, exactly. we're, we're, I didn't, I, that's the first time I've seen the route, I'll be honest. Um, I haven't. I just just turn on the telly and watch it on the telly and be as surprised as anybody else. I don't think the coverage in Spain is anything like the coverage that I would work for because it don't tell us enough information. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think we're going to... This battle is only between four riders anyway now, all the way to Madrid. And, and I, think, I think you're right, John. I think Q will, will be up in second place tonight. And who knows who the leader is? Now, that's a good question. I really don't know. Well, I, I, of... I, reckon, I reckon it's five. I reckon it's five. It's out of five because nah. there's, uh, um, you've got to put, you've got to put uh, Mass in there as well. He, he's going really well. He so you've going got well. Roglic, yeah, Roglic, Carapaz, um, uh, um, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Carthy, yeah. uh, Dan, Dan Martin. Martin. Who's still uh, right in the mix? Now, Dan, yeah. Dan epitomizes everything youngsters should look for. This guy knows how to ride a bike and suffer. The times this guy gets dropped and crawls his way back to the front runners on the climbs and goes for the win as soon as he gets there, he's such a great bike rider to watch yeah, yeah, yeah. from a pleasurable point of view. I did it again on the Angleroo. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I love that guy the way he rides a bike. Yeah. And Enrico uh, Mass has been attacking quite a bit. So those five are all within, like, at the moment, less than two minutes. I think it's a minute 50 back to uh, – yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. well, yeah. so, so everyone else is – the next guy is five minutes back. So they're the five, hmm. um, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, four and a half. Could be a bit more after time. half. I'm not going for five. Yeah. I'll go for four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, uh, Dan Martin on the on the like I, I agree with you, Phil, with how gutsy he is. Absolutely, he's he's not the most like his pedaling style, his actual racing riding style isn't the most attra attractive. Absolutely, what I want to see is is a two up breakaway between Dan Martin and Chris Froome, two of the oh, most sort of ga no. gangly, <laughs> awkward riders in the peloton, swapping turns. The chicken wings. See. Well, they'll be teammates next. They'll be able to do it a lot. They're teammates yeah. next year. They it'd, be, can... it'd be like two, together. two Black Widows riding together, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so you're tipping Roglic. The punters have got Roglic on top. Then uh, Cavagna, uh, I think your man Hugh Carthy is paying $56. So a lot of these betting agencies, you can back them each way. That's so you get quarter point. odds, so that's not, can, that's not re, bad odds. Re, recoup, we can recoup our money from the, from the cup today, Dan. Yeah, don't we'll take any advice off the ET, by the way. <laughs> the, the, more, the more you bet, John, the more you win. Gamble responsibly. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, random questions. Ben Jensen says another serious question. Why wasn't Durbo selected for any Grand Tours this year? Scotty? That's, a, that's an uh, interesting one. Yeah, it's probably wasn't like it? we we should have put to Whitey, but he was focusing on – he was trying to focus on the time trial at the World Championships, um, yep. which he did a reasonable ride, but you know, not not ride in the mix. So, um, so yeah, still a good, solid ride. Um, I'm not really sure. I can't answer that one. We'd have to put that one to, to Matt White next time we get him on. 
Yeah. Uh, pr- apparently, there's a good interview with Hugh Carthy uh, with Mitch Docker. Thanks for the heads up, Sam, uh, on his podcast uh, inside yeah, the Peloton. Uh, and we've got well, another. Well, Dan, Dan, Mitch is a really good interviewer. He did. He meet, is um, in Melbourne a few couple of years back when I was in for the Sun Tour. And he came mm. up to my room and he sat in the room. He asked really interesting questions. He got a lot out of me. I didn't know I, I actually was in me. So, well, yeah, he'll have got some good stuff out of you. Oops, today. <laughs> I'm going to take this because it's, I've got to open the gate. Okay. So right, 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 mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's all happening here. <laughs> I, I think um, um, when, when, uh, when Mitch did the interview with Phil, um, I mentioned an interview with me, I think, at the same, that same Herald Sun Tour, actually. It might have been at the RACB Club down in Gippsland there somewhere, Johnny. Um, and oh, yeah, did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, did interviews that same day with, with Phil and I, actually. Yeah. yeah. It was good. Yep. It was good yeah. to chat with him. Mm. Yep. Uh, we had a few other comments, but Phil's not here to answer them. Um, Buster Thomas says, back. the Brit- the Bridge Lane boys should ride from Sydney to Adelaide. That's good preparation. <laughs> uh, now, for, another... For another- Another talking point. We were talking with, uh, obviously, uh, who did we have on the other night? I've got Rory mental Southern, blank. Rory yeah, Rory? yeah. Oh, but I've been out the sun, up. thirty degrees. I'm fried. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're talking about the riders' union, and I saw an announcement today that there is a new riders' union called the Riders' Union. Um, they don't have, they don't have, they don't have a website, but they've got um, social media account, and it's driven by is it Luke Asigna? and former Jumbo Visma writer Steph Clement, uh, who is currently in the role of interim CEO. The rest of the board is made up of Michael Rutherford, Andrew McQuaid, who we know, and Thibaut Hoffer. Um, so this is obviously a good step moving forward, or does this clutter it, do you think, Scotty? Um, it's, at first bat, you'd say good step because they're doing something, but I just don't know enough about it to understand whether it has been really something driven by the main riders and contributors. And, and as Rory was saying yesterday, it was, a, by the way, fantastic um, interview with Rory. It was great yesterday. Was that, you know, he wants to see every single rider have a vote. So it looks like you've got some interested parties from inside the teams and inside the peloton, which is good. That's better than what they have with the CPA at the moment, which is UCI driven. Um, and they're really, it's, it's, it's a toothless tiger. Whereas this may come, be coming from a better better angle and actually will have some proper buy-in from the riders within the peloton. But I just don't know yet if we've gone to a level where everyone actually gets to buy into it and actually have a proper vote, democratic vote, to actually get the people that we want uh, to be running the show for the riders in particular. But I think this is a better option, by the sounds of it, from what the CPA is at the moment. But I reckon there's even a better way of going forward with this, um, which is to include all of the pros. How'd you go, Phil? Did you get all that sorted, mate? I managed to open the gate. We're having a meter fitted on our electricity. Can you believe? Oh. Um, um, we're just we're just chatting then about it's like Fort Worth here. You know, I don't I don't <laughs> take <this back. laughs> well, but particularly after the release of the doco, mate. You'd have randoms trying paparazzi trying to jump the fence. Um, we're just chatting about the uh, riders union, mate. And there's a new one that's been announced today. Uh, the only name I recognise in the board is Andrew McQuaid. Uh, but we were chatting um, with Rory Sutherland yesterday, and it was about, you know, he, he didn't think that the protest was done correctly. Uh, and then we had uh, George Bennett a couple of days earlier, and he said, look, you got to be careful when you do protests. You don't want to, it's like boy who cried wolf, you don't want to burn too many matches with every little indiscretion. Uh, what are your thoughts, firstly, on the protest and well, secondly, on the, on the Riders' Union? Protest. Was this the one about the time splits? Or yes. Was, yeah. 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 Um, well, they, they, they made a point. It wasn't so much a protest as just registering a point and then they rode away. They didn't, uh, they didn't delay the race too much and they did make a point of saying they weren't blaming the organisation at all, which they thought was brilliant. Um, if they were originally told that this was a flat finish and that the times were were going to be uh, a bunch finished up this climb, then that's the way it should have stayed. You can't alter it halfway through the race. That's impossible. So they were right to protest as far as I was concerned. I didn't agree with the other protests the other week, but that one was absolutely spot on. The commissaires are a law unto themselves, always have been. I should know. I'm, I've been one of them. Um, but they they are, and, and they haven't, uh, the UCI won't get involved in a protest like that at all at the governing level until they've read the reports from the commissaire after the race is over. So 
It's like there's no appeals in by places. If a commissaire relegates you to the last place, you can't appeal against it. You're in the last place, and that's the end of it. So I think they were absolutely wrong, the commissaires, to um, to split that field. And uh, and don't forget, Rob Lichu was the benefactor. He was also on the side of the of the protest as well. So. Hey, it always seems that commissaires get a bad rap, you know. They're, they're always a target of, you know, right out yeah, frustration yeah, and yeah, anger. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever have any good dust-ups when you were running races? I'll tell you, people who I now count as friends, when I was a commissaire, they were pros. They dropped back to the car, and I can't repeat what they said to me when I've made a decision, but they shouted through the car window um, four-letter words, and I just said to them, I'll call him X. I, I just say X, ride away from the car now, otherwise you're out of the race. And he's ridden, ridden away from the car. Because, well, I understand too, I was a cyclist, and so people have forgotten it, but when, when you're riding, I used to swear at riders and get really pissed off with everybody because it's the adrenaline pump. So you've got to allow for that as well. So, yes, I've made um, one or two people, but in, at the same token, the British Professional Cycling Association, as it was in the, in the old days, used to request that I commissaired the races uh, because they felt I was a very fair observer of the sport. But you can only do it as you see it happening, but that's a bad decision to change the rules when the race is in progress. You can't mm. do that. Um, Phil, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but only, I think, last year they changed the rules so that if you do use a four-letter word at a, um, a commissaire, oh. it's instant disqualification. You kicked off the race yeah, now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, we had we had we had two of them at the, at the uh, two. Yeah. Oh, actually, we had three three bodies at the Herald Sun tour last year in a, in a heated moment. Yeah, and they swore at the commissaires. And I, as the race director, I had to go and talk to those riders and ask them to go and apologise because it was the first year that they brought it in, and it was one of the first races that they had for the season, of mm. course. And a heated moment, and several riders were swearing at commissaires, and they, you know, was reminded of them that that in the current rules for that particular year, it's just come in and been implemented that you are to be disqualified from the race. Um, now, Team Sky was had one of the riders, and they were completely aware about of of this and were very apologetic. And there was another rider from uh, Trek Seeker Fredo actually, who. Uh, I explained it to him that you will be kicked off the race unless you go and apologise to the commissaire. They're going to have some leniency on this one because it's a new rule. Um, so he went the next morning and spoke to the commissaire and apologised to her for that and then went on to say, but I think you did a shit job. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. And I thought, you know what? Go home. Kick That's off. Not fair. Do whatever you want. I, 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 I think it's a bit harsh. I think there should be a UCI cake of soap and at the finish, tongues out. Rinse your mouth out with stuff. Exactly. Old, school, Old school, that works. I go with that. Well, well uh, but Phil, Phil, actually, Phil is a four-letter word. They weren't just saying Phil, were they? Or were they saying yeah. if, yeah. if something I, else? I, is I, I, <laughs> now, before we start looking at the Tour de France race route, uh, John, it's time to do your best work, mate. You're in the Gamby. Uh, Jerry's had a big day. No doubt he's got the print Shiraz out, and he's uh, having a few quiet ales with the crew. John, you know that this happens every time. You'd yeah, think got... you would have your script next to the computer. Yeah. yeah. You would well, think. Have. Well, I have. It, it, yeah. All right. well, it's, it, my life is disarray again. Oh, now it flies you're, on you're the you're screen. <laughs> okay. All right, John, do your best. Just, tr just tr oh, try your best, mate. <laughs> One of Australia's favourite wineries, Mitchelton, a place of escape. Except Experience the, the history. Right? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's all open now. We were there big time uh, uh, for Dean's birthday on the, uh, on Sunday, mate. Wow. So experience the history, the beauty, and the serenity of the Golden Valley at your own pace. Looking over the vineyards from the iconic tower, staying at the new hotel, relaxing by that beautiful pool that you see there, recharging in the day spa, that lovely couple are, exploring the seasonal menu at the Muse, where I had the uh, uh, kangaroo... Uh, um, ta ta Carter, yes. Uh, stopping by the Provador uh, and touring the cellars and, of course, tasting their signature wines. Um, Mitchell has become the popular venue for weddings and major functions. Now, there's a happy couple there and another happy couple, we think, there. Um, and also, you have to go down and visit the amazing Aboriginal Art Gallery down in the uh, catacombs down below. It's now, world class. 
Now get Phil to have a stab at what this uh, piece of art is worth. What do you what do you yes. think? The, yeah, what do you think this this Been truck going would up be worth? Well, I know Jerry has this wonderful <clears throat> um, uh, exhibition underneath the ground there, and the yeah. Aboriginal exhibition, but I haven't seen this vehicle um, finished like this. I would think it's possibly priceless. Uh, yeah. Well, on and this it, show, it, it just keeps going up, mate. Well, it's a ten thousand la dollar uh, uh, Land Cruiser with a one point four million dollar paint job. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know where Jerry's spending all his winnings on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, That's amazing. Before we unpack the Tour de France race route, here's a quick word from our great mates at Bike Exchange. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. <clears throat> it's a bike. 374 people are looking at. This guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there, and wherever this is. People that are looking for a bike. Or just a piece of it. Amateurs. Semi-amateurs. And pro-amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank. And these bars. This could be the perfect match. But not this one. This girl has a bike to sell, and thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on Bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours, and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace with over 500,000 products and 900 brands where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns, and rides. Wow. Thanks again. Great ad, isn't it, Phil? It is. It is, is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's that, mate? Did you shoot it? Yeah, I directed it, shot it. Um, I did all of it. Yeah. So, no, I, I wish I could take credit for that. But, uh, unfortunately, it's a big fat no. Uh, yeah. Okay. Would you believe front. that I, I actually did it, Phil? Would you believe that? Mike, I was in focus too. That's unbelievable. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Because no, as you can that, tell by John's, <laughs> as you can tell by John's image, he thinks a lot about cinematography. Like his face is crystal clear tonight. The lighting's perfect. The background's sensational. All right, it's time to look at the Tour de France race race route. Thought what we could do is I'll play the video that they um, released at the presentation. I'll do it at one and a half speed, and uh, yes, just back in London. Uh, will happen again as I was this year. So, but you're not no, it's going to be film. very interesting. I was just saying, but what you were saying earlier, uh, uh, Scotty, uh, about uh, yeah, potential of the season not not starting. What I'm hearing is that they they're very confident the season will happen, but it will be along the lines of what they're doing now in in, uh, uh, in the Vuelta and what they also did at, at the uh, Tour of Flanders is that there will be no spectators. It'll just be the locals will be able to stand out and watch it go past their door, but that's it. Mm. Um, and, and they'll be very strict on all the COVID rules. So it'll be sort of um, a very, very different uh, scenario to what we, we had in France this year. Yeah, I, I'm saying I don't think it's going to be any change in the early part of the year at all. France are getting at the moment, and it was just starting at the time of the Tour de France. I don't think the Tour de France would have been held if we'd have gone on three weeks later and it went. They were so lucky to get away with it because we're now over mm. 40,000 cases a day in France. Mm. Hot spots were along the route of where the Tour went, like Paris and down south, Marseille area, etc. So um, yeah. I think we're going to struggle. We're going to struggle if he's not going away. I think we're in for a very rugged 2021. I really do. What was amazing is those stats where people showed that uh, in June 27, Victoria and France were on the same case numbers, and now we're on zero, obviously, and France is on, yeah, as you said, 40,000, I think 50,000 the other day. Um, what, what surprises me, Phil, is, you know, where you are in the UK, I mean, Boris Johnson had COVID. You know, he almost died. If anyone should understand, you know, how serious this is, I suppose oh, yeah. the biggest difficulty is you're up against people that just – want to go about their normal daily business and the whole angle of um, you don't want the cure to be um, worse than the problem itself. No, but we're, we're overreacting because we're not even reaching figures of deaths here in Britain that are caused by influenza and pneumonia every year. And then we, but the thing is we have vaccines for those. 
So if you die, that's tough luck because we've got the vaccine. But now there's no vaccine for COVID and there's no cure for COVID. So if you're vulnerable, you, you've got a good chance you will pass away. It's like people mm. of my age. But for kids growing up, um, they're, they're fine. They, they just, they, I, I've got a lot of people who've had it. I know them. They've had it. They didn't even know they had it. And it's cleared and gone. But they could have passed it on to somebody else. Young people, um, it's, not a, it's not a serious disease at all for young people. And and the other the other factor is if if the hospitals get inundated, Phil, like we saw in say around Bergamo in northern Italy, you that, the, you know, that takes all of the space. So someone that comes in with whatever <clears throat> medical emergency doesn't get treated, and they die even if they don't have COVID. So we there's only X number of hospital beds that are available. And if they get filled up with COVID vases, people die. Britain as a country is spending billions of pounds. That's extra, extra billions when you're thinking dollars. Um, instead of giving everybody money for not going to work and saying that our hospitals and our national health service will, will crash, well, instead of putting the bill, billions in to keep people out of work, <clears throat> put the billions into building more hospitals. And if you get sick, you get, you get in the hospital and hopefully you get cured because the country cannot go on in this manner. But unfortunately, in my respect, I can't get into Australia and I can't get into my other loved country, which is South Africa, because of what's happening in Europe. We are, we are persona non grata as far as the world yeah. is at the moment. Mm. <laughs> uh, back, back to the, the tour route. And, and yeah, I was going to say. Oh, the tour route. <laughs> yeah. Remember the tour route? It'll be 49th and I still won't get to France. <laughs> um, I'd like your your take on some of these things. So some of the little points that I looked at, uh, Phil, about the tour route was, yep, starts in in, in Brest. Second stage is up at Murta Britannia, and that was for Cadell Evans. That's where he won the stage the year yeah. that he won the tour, 2011. Now, he also finished mm. second in the second stage that year behind um, Philip Gilbert. So it just showed right from the very start Phil, uh, that that uh, Cadell was absolutely on fire and he won on the top of the Murder of Britannia. It's going to be great for La Course that they get to race up there six times. That's a proper race, which is so different to what the ladies had to do for several editions of La Course that was only on the final day on the Champs-Élysées. It was a big criterion for them. And the ASO are actually giving them some real credibility now um, and respect by having a proper bike race for them, as they have done the last couple of years. Um, yeah. Three summit finishes. You mentioned Tinia, which is... Um, They've had time trials up there. I meant uh, Evgeny Berzin um, smashing it back in the day up to, to Tinia. So a summit finish up there. Also to Lutadi Den, which uh, for me, Lutadi Den was one of the mo more memorable stage finishes that Lance Armstrong won after he got his handlebars caught on the bag from the spectator, from the little kid and crashed and then went on to win that stage. But also St. Larry Soulon, which is the, the climb up to the Col de Portet, which is where I'm pretty sure... Phil Anderson took the yellow jersey as the first non-European back in 1981, getting the better of, of Bernard Hino. So it was up on the top of that climb. Um, and Mont Ventoux, as you mentioned already, so two times up there. Great memories for me was, you know, Pantani versus Armstrong. Controversy around that, that Armstrong let him win and whether he should or not was disrespectful to do that. Pantani cracked the sads big time after Lance let him win that stage. Um, that was in 2000. But the other one was 1994, Eros Polly, the biggest man in the race, winning <laughs> one of the biggest mountain stages. He was 194 centimetres tall, which is six foot three in the old language, and 87 kilos, and got a massive lead on his own before he hit the climb. Only 20 I don't know, minutes. 20 minutes. And lost about, what, 17 minutes or something going up the climb, but still held on to win. It was yeah. amazing. It was great. Yeah, I used to like you, he used to come over to Africa. <laughs> yeah, he has an Australian wife, I'm pretty sure. You probably met her on the Classic. Yeah, you probably I, think, met. I think she's from Melbourne, I think. Yeah. 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 Well, all the good looking girls are, John, aren't they? I, I, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or Maui, one or the other. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, well, geez, hang yeah. on. <laughs> well, tell about your valley. Tell about my, my <laughs> um, there's a comment about the course. It's from Stuart McIntosh. He says, does the lack of a summit finish on Von 2 stage take something away from this stage? Not really the same if in all likelihood the GC race comes together again on the descent. What do you think, Phil? Well, it won't come together on the descent, that's for sure. That's, and not up to two times up the climb. It's going to be blown all across the mountainside. So 
the best man will still win. It's an interesting take, Stuart, uh, I must confess. But I think um, I think in the long term, it, the, the Tour de France organisers have always been up for experiments to find new ways. And they've always come up with amazing new ideas. It always surprised me how they think about them. I like the idea of two climbs. We used, I remember when we had the two climbs of Alpe d'Huez on two separate stages. Hmm. Um, that was a tough couple of days, and we said they must be mad, but they were quite a success. Uh, I think. Well, uh, they they did the two. They did two climbs of Alpe d'Huez on the one stage. So they climbed it, and, and they then went down. They did. They went down the other side, and then uh, yeah. you know. That was um, a fantastic, uh, uh, and that was a fantastic stage, actually. But I actually disagree with you a little bit on that. Well, I don't think it will be as good because they come, the first climb of Mont Ventoux, it, they haven't done it in the modern era. They're coming up the easy side. It's only like 5% uh, uh, gradient. And no matter what mountain you have, yeah, if it doesn't no. finish on the top, it's never as good as as uh, 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 a finish down the descent. is never as good as the, as the one on the top. No. That's really no. for GC. But look, it, 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 They've still got three other great uh, uh, mountaintop finishes. I think it's a very balanced tour. It's not as tough a, as this year, but I'll tell you who it does suit. It suits uh, Mitchell and Scott with uh, Michael Matthews. It's a really good course for Michael Matthews. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It might well be. And 50, 58 kilometres of time trialling in it's quite a lot. Yeah. Well, Johnny, yeah. Johnny, put, put me, give you this scenario, right? So, Inar Zakarin is away um, early in the stage, up to <laughs> one two, and he's still away as they go the second time. And he's, got a, he's, got a, he, he's got a five minute lead over the top with a twenty k descent, and still loses. Yeah, That's well, he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love uh, at the end of the day, the riders make the course, not the organizers. We'll see. Great divide says, I reckon Alaphilippe is in with a shot next year if he wants it. Well, well it, it, actually, it actually is a good course for, for Julian Alaphilippe. It, if you if you look at it, it's a type of course uh, yeah, that he would go well in. Um, is, is there any gravel well, sections? Like are, are they given the gravel sections the lemon and sars? I, I, I haven't noticed any. I, I, I must have been. I read right through the thing, mm. and uh, yeah, no. well, there's no place in a race like this. There's too much money involved to to risk races like this because of a flat tire. I, I don't, you know. And gravel racing is great. Gravel riding is heaps of fun, and it's massive. The industry is really growing, but at races like this, when there's so much money invested, I don't think gravel sections have any place. Mm. Uh, it's a good point. It's a, it is an arguable point too. I think Alaphilippe, though, he's the, he's the looks model of Dan Martin, and um, never stops trying. And if yeah. there's any chances, he will win the Tour one day. And uh, and I'd love to see it because I actually I'm a little bit partisan to Alaphilippe. I like him. Um, oh, Scotty, I love him. I love you, him. <laughs> you'd, you'd be into this. Ala Philippe's the boys on the social distance potty were saying he wears one of the most expensive watches in the pro peloton whilst he races. Yes. It's like hundred what is it, hundred and forty thousand euro or something? Yeah, it's well it's one of the one of the most expensive. It's yeah, it's a Richard Mule watch, which um he's a big sponsor in Formula One. And while that's one of the most expensive, it doesn't quite match um, Mark Cavendish's watch, which is worth five hundred thousand um, dollars. Which and he wears it in the race. He, he does, right? So I, I caught up with Mark. Yeah, I caught up with Mark at uh, at the London Six Day last year, which unfortunately would have been back for last week to commentate. So that was sad that uh, all of that racing's off as well. And I said to him because I, I didn't really understand. I didn't hadn't heard about the story about his watch and. Um, and the guys over there were telling me. So I said, hey, Kev, tell us about this watch. So he took it off, handed it to me. I put it on. And I said, uh, yeah, they tell me it's worth a bit of money. You know, Is it true? It's worth 500 grand? He said, yeah, something like that. It was a bit of a one of a kind. It was given to him by Richard Mille himself. It was a one of a kind as in he just had it made for him. But he did a deal with Kev that he went onto the bus uh, a couple of years back in the Tour de France and just wanted a signed green jersey one of his old green jerseys. So Cav gave him a green jersey and Richard Miller gave him a $500,000 watch. Pretty Not good swap. Fair, Pretty good swap. That's and unbelievable. He, and, and he, so he races in it all the time, right? So he races in it all the time. After the London Six last year, he went to the next six day, which is in Ghent. Now, yesterday you heard the comment that came from the wheel wizard about uh, my my facial hair and he was talking yes. about the Kupka. So the Kupka 
which we didn't go into yesterday, that's the name of the velodrome in Ghent, which is very famous uh, within the Belgian cycling community. So that's yeah. the six-day track. Mark went to the Kupka and crashed. And he crashed. On, he oh, went, no. He, actually, he, he went lo too low on the track, spun out, crashed on the left-hand side, which is where he has wears his watch on his left hand, as most people do, but not everyone. Um, and I remember watching that crash thinking, gee, I hope that watch is okay. Um, oh, yeah. You know, apparently it was, yeah. <laughs> hey, John, Johnny, we've had uh, George Bennett on the show a number of times, and we talked about how every time he comes on the D2 in the morning, he has a great stage straight after. Yeah. Now, we, we did an episode of Social Distance yesterday, and George doesn't agree. He was such a sad sack. Here's a snippet of him in his head. He thinks he's going shit. <laughs> I'll show you. I don't know why you're so hard on yourself, GB. You're doing awesome. I'm doing shit, but the team's doing awesome. I'm hey, not doing hey, hey. you're doing bloody great. Oh, I appreciate the. I appreciate the. You know, like it's like it's like what a mum always says about their child. You know, he's like always the worst player, but he says, "Oh, he's doing well." But like, I'm I'm not doing badly, but I'm just not that good. You know, like I'm I'm just like standard. Like I'm not sick. I'm not. I'm just absolute base level, you know. So like, the good guys go, and then I'm, I'm like, I'm exactly the, where I am on GC. Like I'm the eleventh best climber in this race. But there's a huge difference. There's miles between the best six or seven guys and then me. And it's just like, which is fine. You know, I'm good enough to do my work, and we're winning. And well, we're not winning actually. We lost. <laughs> we're coming second, but um. It's a bit presumptuous, isn't it? Assuming that we're going to take over in the time trial, we're in a good position going into the TT tomorrow. Um, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm, just, I'm allowed to be tired. I'm doing a grand tour, and I'm, I'm also allowed. Yeah. This is what I also get sometimes. Is yeah, what, what you guys are doing now. You're trying to pick me up and stuff. But if I say I'm not going good, like I'm, I'm not, like I'm not going to, like when I'm flying, I'm not going to say oh, I'm not going good. Like when I'm going real well, I'm, like, oh, I'm going quite well. But I know I'm not going that good. So like. I appreciate like, you know, oh, it's good. You're going well, but I'm not. So like, I'm not going to suddenly go, oh, oh, you got a good point there. I am going well. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not going shit, but I'm not going well. I'm just like, yeah, you know what I mean? It makes a good point. We should have just bagged him and said, well, you're <laughs> creeping. <laughs> well, he's that now, but he did have two of his best rides after he'd been on our show. That's what we're talking about. Not the whole Vuelta. Hey, Phil, you've been around a lot of elite athletes, particularly cyclists. Um, do you find that their mindset is they, they are very hard on themselves? And particularly in 2020, um, we've seen a lot of emotional post-race interviews. Um, this has been a really tough year for a lot of these guys. It's been very, very tough. And they argue with themselves internally because they don't want to show the world that they are superstars. Let's face it, they are the best. And when, the, when they haven't got that form, that magical form, um, they they really don't want to reveal it, but the bike the bike shows it to the world. I mean, the problem now with Chris, with Chris Froome is he's getting slammed on the social media saying, "Get home, get off, you're terrible." It's like what they say to me about my commentary, you know. And we, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, Chris knows deep down he can come back, and he's going to come back, and he will come back. They are very special, mentally adjusted people. And um, I happen to like George a lot. He's another guy that's one of my favourites. He's always got a good grip if you bump into him. He's always, it's never about how well did I do or about his form. He just, he, oh, my cock is just on his breakfast time. Oh, here, um, by the way, thanks. See, I'm hey. in the warm house. You can see us in the warm house, aren't you? Yes, thank the you. Hi, Pat. How are you, darling? All right. Well, it's it's yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. right Pat. Pat. I'm going to need to get Pat's uh, autograph, Phil. She's okay, going to be well, a superstar okay. after that documentary. Oh, my God. I hated that. <laughs> hey, good yeah. luck with the dancing. I it came up then social. I have another Half an hour to go. Half an hour. So an hour's practice and then a lesson. Good. <laughs> Zoom will be the death yeah. of me. I, they're going to be hey. we never need to leave the house hey. anymore. Anybody that retires from school could take up dance. I've never been fitter. Really? <laughs> can I can I just jump in? Can I jump in? So, at the London Olympic Games, so you talk about you know former you know elite athlete myself. Mm. I've never been a great, I guess, walker or, or, since I've stopped racing. I used to get uh, out walked at the supermarket and at the shopping centre by my, my my wife. 
At the London Olympics, following Phil and Trish around, so they would you know, take me around London. We're going to take the you know the the underground and all that stuff. I couldn't keep up. They were just go 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 everywhere we went from venue to venue. And I was, was just amazing. Just, I, honestly, just yeah, remember if I wasn't on my game. I was gone. I was lost. But just remember what I did there. Every single day, I went out to another event, and I walked with camera gear on the trains every single day. Oh, yeah. I'd covered the ground. I'm pretty exhausted actually at the end of that. It was it was pretty hard. Oh, going. you killed me! You killed me! Well, I, I, <laughs> and I was wearing high heels most of the time as well, which was pretty stupid, but nevertheless. Well, I'm not saying it was tough, Scott. You but I used to get to the velodrome for a sit down and a rest. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, just, I just got I just got a text from uh, my mate Vaz, and he said it's Trish, not Pat. So I went back to the old. Uh, oh, did you, uh, you have to forgive me. Sorry, Trish. Oh. <laughs> you know you're too long, John. That's the trouble. All are old. <laughs> hey, can I can I ask can I ask Trish how has the reaction been to the documentary? Because a few people have seen it now in Adelaide, and uh, Phil was saying it's going to be released in New Zealand. Has, have you been overwhelmed by the reaction? Yeah, with who's seen it? Absolutely. I think it's been incredible. I mean, yeah. I, it, when I look at it, and I've looked at it now three or so times, it really is a story, and I, I find it's not really like a documentary. It's almost like a film, and they said the same thing, and I tell you, there's a hell of a lot of stuff on that cutting room floor. Really? Inclu yeah. Including me. All my bits on the cutting room floor, but anyway. <laughs> John's filthy. He is filthy. He didn't make it, which I'm very disappointed. I'll get over it. I'll get over it. Oh, well, we're, yeah. we're, we're going to make an addendum DVD with all what's on the cutting room floor as an extra. Which <laughs> have been ah, well, I could make the oh. second cut. Okay. <laughs> You might. Okay. Yeah. All my cycling friends in Britain got chopped. As yeah, well. the cycling <laughs> the chopped. Basic was, so it's, much stuff got chopped. Runs at one hour fifty-one minutes now, and when they finished the edit, it was two hours thirty. So they just had to cut it back. It wasn't a James Bond mm. movie, for goodness sake. But they followed no, no. around for two years, and um, and you you heard the male response to um, the Melbourne Cup and all that, and so now you know Nick is is um, a character who takes them. Dealing with for two years being followed around by him, but anyway, that's my story. <laughs> but, uh, the riff riff, the riff raff got the flick. It was easy to get rid of the riff raff first. So <laughs> after I was gone. Well, well, if you yeah. remember, John, I asked your interview from All for One as well, so you should be used to it. Yeah, I, I got to say one word. I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Progress. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking to still be in it after Chris got involved. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, what a, what about guys? What about an eight part series with the Liggetts and, and actually go more into the Africa stuff, more about where the rhinos are at? Um, yeah, and honestly, it's an eight part series. That would be interesting because we've yeah. had some interesting yeah. stuff going on at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. Well, don't you know, it's but that, a cycling no, it's a cycling podcast. podcast. Yeah. I'll well, leave it for now. We will divert but, it to um, a rhino very broadcast. Idea. And a koala, oh. we've just got we've heard great news about the koala yeah, today, just, but we're not going to involve in it. So. Well, <laughs> not, not now. Well, it's one for another hey, podcast, guys. Guys, before we go, Trish, um, just so you know, where I'm living in – well, I'm in Bendigo right now, but where I've been living in northern New South Wales, it's an estate called um, Koala Beach. It's just outside mm -hmm. of Pottsville, which is in between Byron Bay and Tweed Head, so you get some reference there, okay? Yeah, and. Yeah. There are no cats or dogs allowed in the estate at all. It is only Perfect. for natural wildlife. Um, and there are koalas. I haven't seen one yet, but I've been se had several videos sent to me of the koalas that have been roaming around in the last couple of weeks, um, which I've been a bit disappointed by because I haven't been there and seen them um, in this period. Yeah. But, yeah, it's to protect the, the natural um, wildlife, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Got yeah. to come. It's got, got to come. It has to I mean, come. I love a cat, but they they eat fifteen million birds a year in Britain alone. We can't sustain. Them. Mm. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind a cat as well. I remember when we were in Rio, they were talking about them. Um, but do, uh, you remember the story, Phil? One of the commentators. Who was that? I forget now. Um, and he went to a local food stand, and they got some meat on sticks. Oh and no. They're, you know where I'm going with this, right? Yes. I don't know if I should say all of it, but that's what they were eating. They were told afterwards that that's what they were eating. Wow. When I was yeah. Olympic, yeah. When can, I was we, can, can we get back to the bike race? Oh, We've been going for an hour. We haven't even covered the bloody uh, don't, 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 yet or the stage. Don't, don't, don't get me started on Dagwood dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows what's in a Dagwood dog. 
Like, Talking about the famous cats. expression came in the Tour de France, when it was 80, 88, when um, Dagot or Lauritsen won the stage of uh, Luzardi Den, which is where the tour goes next year. And uh, I'd been waiting to say this for, for 10 years. And I said, as he crossed the line, every dag has his day. Because in the in Norwegian you pronounce dag otto as dog otto, and so uh, every dog has his death. Yeah, that's he, very he, clever. He, he, dag otto actually heard about it later, so he's <laughs> <laughs> well. Dag dag has a different meaning in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't know. I don't speak Australian. You see, it's like oh, it's got a couple. If you're very funny, you're a dag. Or you could be hanging off the back of a sheep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, which is the original meaning. Yes. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> so, John, what else did you want to talk about before well, we go? I, Tour de France. I mean, I think it's a really exciting uh, Tour de France. It's very balanced. I mentioned Michael Matthews. Uh, I think he'd be uh, a great yes. chance for the green jersey on a course like this. Of course, Sagan, uh, Van Aert. Yeah, they're, they're going to be. Uh, it's a tour that suits them, or suits so uh, suits Ella Philippe. But then we've got these, you know, our defending champion. I mean, it's any course will suit him with the extra time trialing. He'll, he'll love it, love that as well. Um, and, and Roglic, it's a great course for Roglic. So, uh, but let's you know, not the youngsters this year have really come to the plate. Yeah, yeah. 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 the youngsters. Nobody said it right the other day. When he said uh, there's no place for the old riders left now, the youngsters are taking over. And I think he's probably right. But I'm, we'll say about Michael. I, uh, I don't think we've seen the best of this kid. Even that, he wanted to go away and prove himself, so he changed team. But he's come back, and I think now now he knows where his direction is. Um, we might see the best of him next season. I hope we do. Yeah, yeah, and as you well, saw with um, Brown Dennis, if you're happy in the environment, you're going to get yeah. the best out of yourself. So, yeah, yeah, be, yeah. be similar. Um, um, Bernal, just f remember, Bernal will be back next year, so obviously yes, he will. not quite. I'm yeah. sure he will. Um, yeah. yeah, and the other one, the other one that we haven't mentioned um, is Remco Evenepoel. Just, just yeah. wait till he's back and going again with his, you know, his all his injuries are healed. He is extraordinary. He is incredible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Van der Van der Poel and Matthew, uh, Adana, they're all they're all going to crash. It'd be a great season next year. Yep, yeah, for sure. Will be. Yeah. Um, we've got a comment, and I want to send a shout out. This is from Kirsty Baxter. She said, "Just reading Taryn, which is Taryn Kirby, embarking on a new chapter of her career in 2021 and leaving Green Edge. She's done some amazing things in her six years there, and wish her all the best with her next adventure." Shout out to Taryn Kirby. She's been sensational. Yeah. She's the media uh, manager for the Green Edge team. Uh, she came across in 2014. She's a tremendous hard worker, but uh, a great person as well. So chapeau to Taryn for uh, a very Absolutely. successful stint with the team. Taryn is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I've known her for many, many years. Uh, she's been and she's gone and she's come back. And now, now you're telling me she's gone again. But whatever. Yeah, she's a done. top young lady, actually. Yeah, top young lady. Yeah, she's absolutely top draw. Yeah. Well done. Mm. Much success, Taron, if you're hearing me. Yep, mm. for sure. Well, there's, uh, there's anything you want to add? Moving on. Yeah, well, there's a few. Like Adam Hansen um, going into triathlon now. And, you know, there's mm -hmm. a, a Rory Sutherland, as we spoke to last night, that's moving on. Um, we still don't know what's going to happen with Mark Cavendish, um, if he's going to have a contract for next year or if he's that, if that's it for him. So He doesn't, that he doesn't of, need to. He can, he can just sell his watch and not work for a couple of years. Yeah. Well, he can put his he can put his five hundred thousand dollar watch on, jump in his McLaren, and then cruise home to his estate. He's doing exactly. okay. So, and so he's doing because he's had an incredible career. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. It's going to be interesting. So, um, anything you want to add before we go, boys? No, no. no I think we're uh, nailed right down. Right. Well, um, question question to Phil. Sorry, Dance. Question to Phil. Yep. Um, it took you a while to get out of South Africa to get back to the UK. So what's the plan now? Yeah. Like, are you going to stay? Well, obviously, with the lockdown, well, we so what's the go? Basically, all, my, all my haunts are done. I used to fly around um, uh, 180, 200,000 kilometres a year, at least, maybe more. And um, I can't go to Australia at the moment, as the rules currently stand. So my month of January, which I used to come over six, seven weeks and work for the network, as you know. Um, supposed to be over in, uh, in the period of the Olympic Games, 
because we're voicing that anyway from Melbourne, as was always the plan. But there's a yeah, room. That's you, 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 me, and enemies together. Yeah, well, I could be voicing it from London because it was a big success when I did the Tour de France for American television from London. Huge success. Biggest viewing figure for 10 years. Uh, and that's gone down well in America. Um, and they're definitely going to, I think, do it again uh, in London because there's no time to set it up. It's only eight months to Tour de France. We have a crew of 90 people, hotels to book, and there's no certainty we can go into France. So I suspect we'll be in London, whatever happens now. But we'll see. And maybe we'll get a skeleton crew out there. Who knows? But so my life has totally changed. I can't get home. Home to uh, I call you home because I I live there as well in South Africa. I won't go back. I've got a, a, a girl looks after the house, a housemaid. And I've got a guy goes and opens the door and puts the windows back in when the baboons knock them out, and that's it. Um, we are here for the foreseeable future. And if you want the truth, I think 2021 is not going to be a great year either for the sport. And hey, I'm getting older. You know. I can't. Uh, I've got to be careful now. Man of my age could get COVID. As he, as he <laughs> swigs, right. as he swigs down <laughs> another cup of scotch. Is that scotch <laughs> in the cup there, mate? It's black coffee. It's black coffee yeah. Um, if you need someone to house this, I'll, I'll house it in South Africa for if you want over the next couple of months. I've got no problems with that. Brilliant. Well, you've got to you've got to sharpen your act against uh, the animals. Uh, the crocodiles and the lions are getting quite quite brave now. There's nobody out there. Uh, yeah. Okay, All right. Just leave the lady. You, you, you're a dag, Scott. Right. Scott. <laughs> Scott. Scotty. Scotty. You're a dag. <laughs> Which one do you mean? <laughs> what fucking dag you say? Ah, oh, well, I'll leave that up to the to, to the partners. No, the more <laughs> you know, for a while, and um, but I really think that um, the sport will come stronger by it. But I think also the world tour is going to struggle. I think almost certainly now we're going to lose two two world tour teams. Um, yeah. I, I can't see Dougie Ryder pulling the matters to rights with Team NPT, and uh, and it looks as though Jim Okovich has got his problems in bringing back somebody to replace Team CCC. So those two tours may fall off the radar for next season. Um, now there's, and the, the, you know they're making the rules a bit more flexible at world tour level as well. So that, uh, not all the riders are not committed to every major race in the world just now. So everything changes. We're going to have to adapt and adopt and hope that uh, we get through next year pretty strongly. Yeah. But yep. as far as the right sport, the, yep. the racing goes, it's the best. And, and oh, exactly. Come out of nowhere. Who would have tipped Teo Gagan Hart to win the Giro? Mm. And, and yeah. I know it's, uh, it's really hurt to get Ein Thomas, who crashed out on the second or third day, um, and with a broken pelvis, of all things. But he, he, he said he couldn't even watch the television, even though it was his own teammate winning yeah. Well, we had Dave Brailsford on for uh, you know, nearly an hour the other day, uh, just yeah, after the finish. Yeah. He was so excited, you know. He, he was yeah. it, it, about the way the racing was going, about uh, the the new uh, Ineos way of racing. It, it, it was it was great to hear. Yeah, it, well, it is, and and Dave Brailsford's a, a magical background coach. Yeah, he knows. Um, and, but do you know, John, I think so that when Dave was talking about this, you know, maybe just sort of throw caution to the wind kind of style of racing. I think the era of Ineos doing that started and finished at the Giro. I, I, there's no we'll way we'll they're going to risk that again going forward. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. It's still kind of good time yeah, to win the crowd of three tours, even with the collapse of Bernal in the Tour de France. Mm -hmm. so it's still mm -hmm. a question. It's going to be interesting. I'm getting, I'm getting eaten by bloody mosquitoes. I'll tell you what's one thing that's living well in the, the Gamby is the bloody mosquitoes. Oh, mate, here. There's, there's been a few that have run in front of the camera, like, you know, on those uh, TV reports. They're big. They can just about lift my computer up and walk away with it. They're big. Anyway. All right. Well, we better let you go. Um, as always, thanks again, Phil, uh, for coming on. Um, great insights, as always. And hang in there, mate. Um, Keep knocking over that scotch out of the, the coffee mug at 9 a.m., mate. That'll, that'll never sort you out. 5 p.m., never. Honestly, never. Not a drop. Oh, no. uh, uh, well, in Greece, I think in Greece, a lot of people do just the grappa shot as soon as they get up in the morning. Oh. They live to 150. They love well, it. Well, maybe I'll just have one small glass then. All right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. We'll see you again tomorrow night, 7.30, Australian yes, Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Another episode of the D Tour. See first, Scotty, Dad. Okay, good. Bye. Bye. This is
the winning 